Alright, here we go. Hello, this is CBOTRA768, and we are back with Phoenix Wright Justice for All. And last time, we finished our investigation by investigating into Mr. Corde Cordella's death, who was supposedly killed by the Nickel Samurai, who we have to try to prove is innocent, because if we don't, uh, Maya will be killed because she was kidnapped by, like, this man named The the Killer. And he's like, hey, you better get this guy acquaint acquittled or I'm gonna kill her. So we did our investigation and we found out that, uh, Miss Andrews was actually the mentor of this other woman. Uh, what's her name? Let me see real quick. Yeah, here. Celeste Impact, who died due to suicide. And, uh, Edgeworth finds it a bit suspicious because she, she didn't leave a suicide note behind, or actually it was hidden, because he analyzed her finger and there was, like, ink. And basically now we're starting our first day of the trial, and we have to prove that Ungar didn't kill anybody. So, let's get going. That's pretty much it. This murder happened after the hero of Hell's award ceremony, sir. The victim, Jawan Koya, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the, car, the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Okay. Oh yeah, Edgeworth is back too. I forgot to mention that. He's back and... Uh, the killer said, oh, I have a gift for you, and we found out Miss Von Karma has been shot, which is only in the shoulder, so she's in the hospital, but Edgeworth showed up and was like, oh, I'll take over for her. Anyway, okay. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant went alone to their room, sir. Hmm. I see. Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Okay. And like I always do, I already looked at the first part of the guide, so we just have to one, two, we have to press just three and four and five. The cause of death. Wasn't that because Mr. Corda was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good look. Take a good, hard look at the crime photo. Now, a real pro's attention will be drawn here at to this banana. Hmm? Banana? Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped around his neck, sir. I will say, did they say banana at first or bandana? Ah, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then, what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here! I'll toss the report. So the time of death was 8.15 p.m. Cause of death strangled with a scarf, then stabbed. Okay, so he's strangled. Interesting. I thought we talked not getting any special. Hold it! And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal! The German Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar! And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime! Oh! Then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it? How's that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But... The only fingerprints on your guitar case was a victim. Only the victims, huh? Mmm, I see! Ah, so much for my theory then! Okay, empty, there's some water, but only on top of the lid. There's his fingerprints. Okay. How about we play it right now? What convinced you it had nothing to do with this case? The guitar was at the Gatewire Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Jawan Cordia, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? <laughs> yes, sir. 
even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel? Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Mm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Mm. Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Matt on God? Because there was a reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edge was back in full swing. Very well. Detective Country, please testify about this matter. Yeah, sure. Kiss. Why a best on God? Matt on God and June Koya were huge rivals for each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That mo that's more than enough in my books. As for evidence, they determined Ninja's buttons. It was ripped off of the ninja costume and was found in Angard's Hakaba. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant brought the knife for the defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Mm. So the defendant fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on your handle, so your fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sure. There's the victim's blood and on guard's fingerprints in the gri gra grips gate water is engraved. Okay. And there's this button. I will say, does that kind of disprove the theory that it was a premeditated? Because if the knife was from the hotel... Like, if he wanted to stab him, why didn't he just bring his own knife then? Why did he use a hotel knife then? And there's his button! That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Mm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? Jamming into his button. Blood dripped from his costume, is covered in his blood, found in guard's pants. All of this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Huh. I'll find a hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you'd like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. So, I was say, I'm thinking it's actually the last statement, because, what does he say? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he says it was premeditated murder, but, as we can see, the, ho the knife is from the hotel, and we even, in the investigation, saw one of the knives was missing, so... It can't, it wasn't pre work it wasn't premeditated, because why did he use a hotel knife? Yep. Nice. Wait a second! Whoa, what? So the basis of your argument is that this was a premeditated murder, is simply that. I'm glad I'm right. My client brought a knife beforehand. <laughs> That's why, <right>, pal! <laughs> the defendant! Did not buy this knife. Huh? huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm glad that stuck out to me. Huh? It has a gatewater seal set into the handle! Gatewater? I think I've heard that name come out before. That, that's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel? Huh? Uh-oh! <laughs> the murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not premeditated. Oh my god, the murder wasn't premeditated? I had no idea. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> well, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? 
You damn fool. I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. H how so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I did no Oh. <laughs> the question is... Where did this knife come from? Well, why, that's obvious! It came from the victim, Mr. Cordia's room! <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. Mm hmm he had his knife. There is a knife and a fork on the table! Then, where in the world did this knife come from? <laughs> you damn fool judge, I'll tell you. If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt Ungard. Yep. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? Huh. We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt and God's knife was missing. Urgh. Mr. and God had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. Oh my god, Andrew's so cool! I can't believe we like that Mr. Right guy, he sucks! Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth! Absolutely brilliant! A brilliantly clear deduction! It seems like Edgeworth had this planned from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it! A murder weapon with fingerprints, and a button for the victim's costume! There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here! I can safely say that any further de deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense would were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not shown? Evidence not met and shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Just in case. Um, well, Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, that gavel of his will be ringing out of the ringing out to the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, you have something important and necessary to present to this court. Uh, let me stay here. Do we have anything? Uh, if I had to say, maybe the tomato juice? If I had to take a guess. Let me just confirm this. Like, I think we do have to show evidence, but I just don't know which. Let me check real quick. Da -da. Da -da -da -da. Yep, I was right. Alright, I just wanted to make sure. So I was right. It's the wine glass. There's one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one piece of evidence that catches my attention. Yeah, that did catch my attention. Because, again, during the murder, we discussed, like, he was murdered right here, and there was, like, a wine glass filled with tomato juice. And it wasn't disturbed at all. It wasn't broken for some reason. Something that this court has yet to see. M Mr. Wright? I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one. 
What the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. I messed this up. It's curtain for us all. You may now present one, and only one piece of evidence. Jesus. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to court? I'm glad I got this right. Like, yeah, that was about to say, there's the wine glass. Take it! This is a lying wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. Oh, is it not there, or is it? It is there. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken. His makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm, well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Ooh. Mm. Uh, well, uh, what do y'all have to say? Oh, uh, well, yes, it is a bit peculiar. It, y yes, isn't it? Uh, I thought it was. I I'm not pulling shit out of my ass. <laughs> you can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Jesus Christ, you're so sad, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Idroid? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion? Hmm, you don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? <laughs> it's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body. Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. Right, Mr. Wright? Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? Uh, honestly. Alright, I saved just in case. I'd say there's like no way, right? I'm gonna go with no way. If I'm wrong, then I can just load. If I appear weak here, the trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. Oh, so it didn't matter. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set up the cup on the table. Hmm. You turned the situation on its head yet again as usual. Mr. Edward, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. Wh what? Oh. <laughs> You're not thinking hard enough today, Mr. Wright. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Th then, of course it has been thoroughly inspected for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yeah, like every investigation does, Phoenix. How do you not know this already? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, well, whose were they? They were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were they were of one Adrian Andrews. What? Fine glass updating. The court record found next to the victims. Filled with tomato juice. Has her fingerprints. Okay. That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Grr, I can't believe I fell into it now. Trap! Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Cordia. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense, apparently. Now, do you see, Mr. Wright? 
You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Gah! I thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. Well, wait a second, Mr. Edward! I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to answer my verdict! <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edward thinking? Hmm. Oh god, hello. Uh, now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Uh. Witness, your name and occupation, please. <laughs> G-O-T-C-H-A. I wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Bonnie, it's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet, it was the wicked witch of the witness stand. <laughs> I tell you, this time, I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even things that don't have to deal with that terrible crime. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. <laughs> oh. Shush, I'm talking to my dearest Eddie Wendy right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, madam. No, no, no. Please, by all means, interrupt her. Please! Uh, um, uh, anyway, witness your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that you are hot-headed now, hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Old Bag? It was a great job being able to see my dearest John. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you are bad of the victim? Look, everyone is crazy over that young guy, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Cordia. Um, that those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Eddie Pooh. Oh my Christ. <laughs> what you witnessed. Okay. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor John's room. It was Ungard, not Ungard. He was trying to sneak his way out of John's room. Half path. Hmm, so Mr. Ungard came out from the victim's room? See, it was... It has to be him. He was the murderer. Hmm. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Okay. I was wondering about this. What were you interested in? Something you were interested in? And just what was that? 
It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone you know. It's some secret between me and John. Ah, and Eddie Pooh, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? But should it prove relevant, we can always have it app appended appended to her testimony. It looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Hmm. And did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? Okay. Tell the truth, I'm just using the guy. So it's three, four, five. Yeah, I was about to say, I wanted to press this on guard. How does she know it's on guard? You saw my client. Are you sure about that? Yes, yeah, see? Really? <sighs> Annoying brat! When I say I saw someone, I saw that person! Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year, I should delve into this a bit further. Person's face, person was carrying. I will say, I'd say the clothes, right? Yeah. Is right. That's the thing I'd point out. Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are. Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, now what was it? Oh, yes. It was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing. That racing jacket. <laughs> ah. He was wearing that at the detention center, too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Hmm. Man! Uh, right. So, Mr. White, was this testimony just now important or relevant anyway? Huh. I say it was very important. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna use the guide, but I mean, still. I always like to take a guess first, then see if I'm right. Of course it was important, Your Honor! Objection! Objection! Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important! Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Huh? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be a append appended to her testimony. Hmm, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right! Witness, please! Oh, uh, well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... He was wearing his flashy racing jacket. Honestly, it's just all for show! I will say, I think I get what Phoenix is getting at. That's wrong. He was wearing his Nickel Samurai costume the whole time, wasn't he? What would it be? Hang on. I'm trying to think. Whoa. Or... Do we have a profile on the Nickel Samurai? No. Okay, hang on. Oh, the button. Oh, because... Okay, yeah, this is what proves the costume. I see it now, because it mentions that, and that's what he was wearing with his costume. There we go, got it. Okay. Miss Obag! <laughs> what? Don't say my name for no reason! Do you know what this is? Ah! It's button number two on the Jammy Ninja's costume! Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Get it here! Get it here! You don't give it to- If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with that! Wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Ungar's body during a full body search. See? See? This button proved beyond a shadow of a doubt. It was that rascal Ungar. It was caught up in the pleats of his nickel samurai cost, nickel samurai hakaba pants. See? See? And on guard is the Nickel Samurai! 
Alright, gotta let it cool down. Be right back. Alright, here we go. Witness! Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination. But just now, didn't you say that the defendant, Matt Ungard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? Uh. Ah, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I wore the trend is dressed, then maybe. But instead, I have to put up with wearing this ridiculous looking. And this outfit is hideous, right? I got a tape recorder. It's heavy, so heavy, I wish that we would be switched. Dream alive for all those kids out there. Understand now, take a look in the mirror, your clothes. Documentary on curling. You should take a rip. Jesus Christ. Now hold your tongue still, there for one second. So what you saw in actuality was not Mr. On God, the man. But Mr. On God, the Nickel Samurai? But when you think about it. Oh, oh my God, she sucks as a witness. They're really one and the same anyway. They're really one and the same anyway. I'm trying not to make it sound too sassy, but I mean, that's probably right. Miss Olbeck, this is a very important point we are talking about. Auntie Pooh, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important and agree with me for a change. God, and God, right always breaks down so easily. Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Uh, all right, if you insist. I should be the one saying, not you. <laughs> Who was so? And guard, and guard. Yes, now I remember. The nickel samurai. That's right. It was the nickel samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been conven convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Joe. Okay. I... I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Do you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy. Think it's such rude things. But, but the possibility does exist. Ah, you youngums today. I told you, there's no way it was anyone else. How do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Miss Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Okay. Let me get my cross-examining guide. So, okay. So, okay. Ba -ba -ba. So, it's saying the knife again? Well, there's a case on the safe. Safe and sorry. Okay. Take it! I kinda don't understand, why is it the knife? Is it again with the uh, hotel knife thing again? Please take a look at this! Yeah? So it's a knife! Big damn! If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that, that's not my intention at all. That's a knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I'm driving at. I don't even know what you're driving at. Yeah, I'm with the judge here. What are we driving at? And whose car are we driving? Oh, God. If Mr. Ungar was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder... Wait, does it have gloves? So he's saying, how did it get fingerprints? 
then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Oh, okay, so he's saying basically he ate dinner with it, but then someone put on the Nickel Samurai costume, grabbed the knife, and stabbed him with it, and knowing that his fingerprints wouldn't be left behind, left the knife there to frame him. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife, on this knife right off. Oh my god! Oh, he apparently would have wiped them too. So yeah, so this is... But yeah, it's still the same theory. Someone's framing. Oh, that's right! The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? Objection! He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. Objection! And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There is no way he would do something like that! However, there is one possibility! Then let's hear your possibility! It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. And at that time, the defendant held no intention to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Mm, but the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Hmm, yes, I've heard that before. Well, Mr. Buck, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So, let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him? Now up to this point, are there any problems with this theory? I see. There are no problems. There's a contradiction. Think about it one more time. There probably is a contradiction there. Well, I mean, we know that Andrews went there, right? If I had to choose, I'm gonna say it'd be there's a contradiction. Let me just make sure. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. The Yep, there is. Okay. This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. I was going to say, is it because of Andrews, right? What are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ongard was the killer. If that's the case... Save. I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. Because of the knife. Because if he was, if because why was his knife brought to his room? Yep. This knife. This knife was used by Mr. Ungard at dinner. Y yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Cordia. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intention to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? <sighs> Which means, Mr. Edward, your theory was flawed from sus... sus Susposition one! Ah, I can't say it! <laughs> and one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. Huh. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us! Oh my god, there's actually a real killer? I had no idea! Oh, order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? Save. So why would they? Two... Well, 
Well, let's see. We remember he was actually strangled first, then stabbed. So, I'd actually say it's to hide the murder method. Because he was strangled. And then, he was stabbed. He was already dead when he got stabbed. It's to hide the way in which the murderer was carried. The murder was carried out. Of course. M more of your nonsense. Take another look at the autopsy report. Yep, I just remembered this. The victim actually died from strangulation. The killer tried to hide this by stabbing a knife into the victim's chest. But doesn't the autopsy admit that the cause of death was strangulation? Well, yes, the real cause of death was easily discovered. Then I'd say the knife did a terrible job of concealing this fact! Huh. Eh <laughs> Oh, that was wrong. <laughs> well, again, the guy saved. I mean, I... Honestly, I wanted to go with this, but I mean, whatever, okay. To frame Matt, okay. I was say, I wasn't thinking, because, yeah, wait a minute. Fingerprints on it. Of course the killer did it to frame him, because... Why would the killer go through all the trouble to make sure fingerprints are on the knife? It's to frame my client, Mr. Ungard, of course. To frame? Objection! Objection? Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? Objection! Objection! Okay. But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Her witness! Yeah, I was about to say. I was about to say, that's true. Like, yeah, it's all about the fingerprints. Because, yeah, like, if it was really him, why were his fingerprints left behind? Uh, looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy Poo? <laughs> Witness, did you or did you not re really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Ungard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now. Look, I was waiting around in front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for that Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. Huh? I wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. Alright then. Who were you waiting around for then? Uh, huh. That's some secret to anyone outside of security. She was talking about gossip earlier. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Gian Cordia. Am I correct, witness? <laughs> the way you think. You are a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So, Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But, it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a cool glimpse of Mr. Cordia. Maybe, Phoenix, maybe the Old Bag was waiting around for that person. Huh, if it's who I think Mia's hinting at, it's certainly possible. Miss Old Bag, you were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? And, again, back to the gossip, Miss Angie. Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ungard's manager. But, but why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Mm. Oh, this is, well, this is, mm, uh, oh, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA? Are you saying it? Adrian Andrews, without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. <laughs> Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to com confidentiality stuff then. I don't even know what I just said. With this? What in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. 
a very bad feeling. I got some info, some very secret info from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. But, but what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edward, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then. Witness, please just lie about this. Secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of your ye out of you, youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Billy, it's not like we're ten years old. Oh, God. Okay. Secret information. So what's the secret information? That Ungard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Dion by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with John. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? Okay. The defendant sent his manager. What a dis distasteful topic for the court for this court. Obviously, no, we already know he didn't send her. She went there on her own because she wanted information about her mentor's suicide. What? Nobody's above gossip! And isn't there a saying? The truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Mr. Edward, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth the article proposes is, in fact, baseless gossip. Hmm, but should this be true? Then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Miss Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful, the old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right, I'm guys nothing but your own foul-blooded yell. Well, as the old saying goes, you gotta burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Highway to the danger zone. <laughs> That's all I can think. Okay. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Top C, we got that. So it says first and fifth statement. Wait! What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over! Secret information that no one else knows yet. If that's true, then how do you know this secret information? Huh? Well, that's because I'm a pro! Yes, that's it! Huh. Even if you drill a hole into my brain, you'll never find it. How in the world did that old bat get such a secret piece of evidence? Information. Uh. I think it. Yeah, I was about to say it's Lotta, right? And yeah, this is Lotta's camera. Tabloid article about the victim. So, yeah, okay. I did kind of see this in the guy. So, okay, so that's the evidence to prove that Lada did it. So no one else is supposed to know this secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Old Bag? Why, why, why are you looking at me like that? Stop that! Witness! I hate to say it, but this is how you came to acquire your secret info, isn't it? Because you're the one that stole the camera. The investigative photographer, Lotta Hart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous woman. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing? On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outrage er, impression about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, 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 no. I said impressions. Then, then, then 
everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless! Ah, that's it! That's the note! Ah! Uh? Ah! No! You see? This is something completely different! This is my top secret list of groceries to buy! Hmm! Then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note? I'm a huge fan of John's! That's why! That infamous puffy haired whippersnapper! She's working with that evil Ungard! She said so herself! And Ungard, I'm his sidekick! She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck! I was only checking what she had written! Uh, nobody's believing your bullshit. Eddie Pooh! You believe me, don't you? Yeah. I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. It's only one piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to madden your vintage wine. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we could overlook this just once. She looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? No, never forgive her. Pile on the pressure. If I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a devastating blow to the prosecution. Witness, you said that the only thing you stole was that note? Is this correct? Stow, why don't you listen more carefully, you announcing brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible, lonely trash can. That's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it. Are you putting my credibility under Sir Certini again? Miss Old Bet. I don't believe that the note is the only thing you stole that night. Should be the camera, too. Miss Old Bag, that note was with a camera inside its case, wasn't it? Yep. A camera! Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My Sweetie 600 camera disappeared on me. Why? Why? Witness! What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it is only logical that you have the camera, too! Gah! Looks like you found me out of gun, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? Uh, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know. I still eat meals like you. I fall in love and borrow things from people. Um, I think your definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman business, woman's business card, and that one I n noticed it said... Signed back celebrity photographer extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of pictures he had taken. I'm a professional security guy. It's my business to know these things. Oh my gosh, she's so professional. Bailey, check this camera photos. Hurry! We must examine them at once. Did we do it? Well, Mr. Edward, what do we have? There's only one file that seems to be relevant to this case. Please present it to the court! Uh, this is... This is a nickel samurai! He is wearing gloves. Oh. See? I told you! That's the guy I saw! This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter! Lodge's photo had his record. What, what does all this mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photo by itself does not prove that the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. Ungar clearly stated that... 
at the time of the murder, he was still in his Nickel Samurai costume. If that is the case, then this Nickel Samurai is... <laughs> the Defendant. Oh my god, it was the Defendant, I had no idea. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright. The court will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive evidence against your client? If this photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here in Wally, then I would put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lada took, there's... Nothing strange about it. Something strange about it. I'd say it was strange about it, right? Because if we don't say anything, we're done for, right? Uh, yeah. There's, there's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edward? I think we can all agree there's nothing strange with this photo. There is no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. Debunk with the bu a bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um, anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you're... If you really believe you cannot find something wrong with the photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Um, well, I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this chance go by, go by. Where in the heck did she take this photo from, anyway? It's all out of focus. Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? Now, let's hear your objection. What about this photo? It's strange. It says the feet area. That is kind of something that draws my attention. Like, why can we not see the feet? So, here. I would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. What, what are you pointing to? His ankles? If you would see this person's ankles, that would be one thing. However, you can't. And what does that mean? The costume person in his photo could not have been Mr. Ungar. What is the meaning of this? Objection. I wonder if you would care to elaborate with actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai poster. Now, let's say you can see his feet, can you? Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His... His socks! You can see his socks! Uh-huh. Exactly. However, in this photo, the Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakaba up just to walk. There is only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Oh my god! Oh, I didn't know they were so short! All right. I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Ed Edward is unusually calm today. That's true. He just he's just letting the trial run itself. As if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then I haven't damaged his case at all? Mr. Edward, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not Matt and God, then everything the prosecutor has tried to prove has been meaningless. All right, I gotta let the SD card cool down. Be right back. This is a long one. All right, I think we're almost at the end, so let's get going. Oh my God, everything became meaningless. Oh, jeez. 
Hmm. I figured it would come to this. What? Right. I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven that the person inside this costume is not Mr. Ungod. And I think I just messed up the camera. Sorry, Jesus. Quality looks alright, so okay, let's continue. In that case, who is this of a, a photo of? Hmm. Who is a person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Well, again, if I had to say, it's probably Andrews. Because, again, she probably wanted revenge for her mentor committing suicide. And she blamed Mr. Corda for it. Don't stress, stress out over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. What you should be focusing on is Edward's attitude, don't you think? Yeah. Why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts! I'd say it's Andrews. Who is the person in this photograph? Adrian Andrews? If you want to know who that Nickel Samurai is, it is none other than this woman. And why would you say it must be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. And she can freely move in and out of Mr. Ungard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Ungard that night. And how does that add up all at all? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Ungard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as a murder weapon? Why don't you just say what it is you want, right? I have to do this now. It's my last chance to turn things around. <sighs> the defense moves to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of John Cordia. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Oh my god, she tried to frame him for the crime. I had no idea. Order, order, order. It looks like this trial has hit an, uh, a most unexpected development. Mr. Edward. Yes, Your Honor. This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss and Adrian Andrews. A murder cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to court as a witness, it means that the trial will go on for another day. One more day? Look! Yeah. If I don't get a verdict today, then Maya! Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn the court. I gotta raise an objection. Now then. Objection. objection! Please, your honor, continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrews' testimony if she's not hold it. Yep. I abhor wasting much valuable time. Uh, Edgeworth? <laughs> Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But, but we cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Unexpected development? I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave his way to subponing Miss Adrian Andrews' is all. Happening according to plan, even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. But what, what, what? What? 
Wow, that was the biggest what I ever heard. What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution's lobby. <laughs> she is the next witness. Huh? Everything. Everything was planned out in advance by that man. Somehow, I knew there was no way Edward would overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Very well. We will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a ten minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edward. The court will now take a ten minute recess. Yeah! We did it! Finally did it. <laughs> now we can call it apart after we get to the statement. Yay. On 22nd, 2.14 p.m. District Court, defendant lobby number three. Dude, I can't believe that Adrian. No way. Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews. She is your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony, during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that bloody, that blood covered button in your hakaba. Huh, because she was the one that came to wake me up. Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered John Cordia. But why? I thought she was buds with John. She has her own agenda. Her, her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be all right. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze. Okay, Mr. Lawyer, dude? Phoenix. You think her motive is related to Silly's Impact's missing suicide note, right? Yep. Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact as her strength and reason to live. But then, Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note, and the person thought to have hidden it is John Cordia, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Cordia. All to get the suicide note back. But then the question is, why did she kill him if she really did? That sounds plausible. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' dis dependence dependency issues with regards to Miss Impacts. I would say that was Edward, right? It was Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. Okay. Well, I won't. Oh, my God. That was short 10 minutes. Oh, I managed to get, like, I couldn't even get time to get my chips and coffee. Court will now reconvene. Now then. Mr. Edward, it be! The prosecution calls witness suponed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Miss Mr. John Cordia's room. Me. <laughs> what is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt Ungard. I see! Now then! Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Oh, yes, sure! What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Ah, uh, no, I have no idea what to mean! I've never even heard of Gossip Lab! 
the judge was ever a prosecution witness. He'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Cordia. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and John. But, this was a private matter between John and myself. Hmm, so it was a fry, a fry and bait matter. Or, was that bait and fry? Remind me, busy? But I, I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. Huh? I think we all understand your relationship with the victim. Now, Miss Andrews. Very well. Then witness, please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. <laughs> when I found a birdie. <laughs> all right. Saved. All right, time to call it apart here. And next time, we will continue our second part of the trial and hopefully get a verdict at the end. Because if we don't, Maya will be killed! Ah! So stay tuned for that. Bye. And I want that card. G give me the card. G 